I'm going to introduce the timeline to you in this lesson and point out some of its functionality, but I won't go any deeper than that because the timeline is a high-level feature inside Cinema 4D and we're trying to keep things at an introductory level here in this course. But if you are going to dive deeper into Cinema 4D, then taking a closer look at the timeline is a pretty good idea. To follow along with this lesson, let's just go up to File, Open, Working File, Cinema 4D Files, Keyframes Timeline. For this lesson, I created this little animation here like this. And I set it up using the Record Active Objects mode, the Manual mode, plus I keyframed individual parameters. And you can see those keyframes based upon the object that's currently selected. If I click on the torus, for example, there are the keyframes for the torus's position, scale, and rotation. If I click on the cube, it'll be a different set of keyframes. If I click on this material here for the torus, it has its own set of keyframes. And this one here, or the material for the cube, has its own set of keyframes. If I want to change the position of these keyframes, I can click on one of them and drag it like that to change its position like so. If I want to change the value of a keyframe, I can just drag this guy to one of the keyframes, hold on the shift key here, and it'll snap to that keyframe. And then I change the position, let's say, of the cube, and that'll change the keyframe value here after I click on this little button, for example. Or if I go to the cube and then go to its coordinates and change the keyframes here. I can do all of that here inside the editor. But a better approach, and one that After Effects users would probably be relatively comfortable with, would be to use the timeline. To access the timeline, go up to the Layout drop-down list here, and go to Animation. And there is the timeline. Now the timeline has some similarities to how things work inside After Effects. We have the current time indicator here, the time slider, like so. And then we have these little boxes here indicating that there are keyframes somewhere down underneath here, like the little circles that appear inside After Effects, indicating that it's a keyframe down inside there someplace. The summary basically says that there's some group of keyframes here somewhere. Then here's, let's say, the torus with a plus sign. So I open up the torus, and there's position, scale, and rotation. Again, these little boxes indicate that somewhere down there's a real honest look at this keyframe. If you hover over it, it gives you the values for the keyframes inside there, X, Y, and Z in this particular case. I'll open that up, and there are the individual keyframes there. Now you see there are whole keyframes with one value per keyframe. I can scroll down a bit here. We can take a look at, let's say, the torus material. And it's a different kind of set of keyframes. Let's scroll down a bit farther. Keyframes for color based on RGB. Individual keyframes for the red, green, and blue values, which is pretty slick. And a little bit farther down, there's the keyframe for the transparency brightness property right there. And it shows you these curves that you can control here. Now, we can't see the entire timeline. It stops at about 90 frames here. But you control the visibility here using these two controllers here, very much like the controls up here when you're working inside the scene. So if I click on this little down arrow and go left and right, you see that we zoom out or zoom in. We're zooming out or zooming in from the center, whatever's in the center now. If I take this one here and slide it left and right, you see we can slide the entire thing left and right like that. So we can see the entire timeline just by moving these guys around like that. If I want to move some keyframes here in time, it's important to take some care when you do that because you don't want to, let's say, move just the X value or just the Y value or just the Z value most times. So if you want to move the position to some other time, you click on this, move it this way, see how it moves there inside the scene. If I click on the torus up here, you'll see its keyframes up here, and then I can see them change down here. Now each keyframe has its properties displayed up in the Attributes Manager up here. You're used to seeing the Attributes Manager down here, but it's up here for this particular workspace. And it says Key Time, Key Value, and Interpolation. There are three kinds of interpolation, Spline, Linear, and Step. Spline's the default, which is basically a Bezier curve. Linear is just a straight line in and out to a point, and step is a hold keyframe, so it'll hold to the next keyframe. Step can throw you off a little bit. If you have step for one keyframe, then it'll jump to the next keyframe. So you typically want to have a step keyframe to hold something for a while, and then add another keyframe with that exact same position as a spline keyframe or a linear keyframe, then you can gradually go to the next keyframe. But the default keyframe is spline. And you can adjust the spline by changing the view here inside the timeline. Right now we're inside the key mode, but we can change to the F curve mode. I'll click on that. I'll take a look at position here for the torus. You see things are kind of off the charts there. To be able to see all these curves, press the H key, and that zooms out to show everything there. If I want to work on one of these things, you see X, Y, Z, or R, G, B, so red, green, blue. If I want to work on the Z value, I can click on U and it'll be blue like that. I can click on U. I'll get these handles, these Bezier handles, or spline handles here. Change how the torus behaves there. I can also change the value simply by dragging it up and down. Very similar to the graph editor inside After Effects. So I think you can see that the timeline gives you all sorts of control over your keyframes. And if you do want to dive deeper into Cinema 4D, this is a good place to start.